My next guest, Maura Malone, is a first-time author. She's written a book entitled The Dream Circle. It's available on Amazon. Now, there's a link at www.mauramalone.com. The topic is highly original. Now, here to tell us more, I'm delighted to welcome Maura. Maura, great to speak to you. Hi, Jerry. Lovely to speak to you, too. Maura, can you give us some background about uh, where you're from and uh, your professional background as uh, this informs your book, The Dream Circle? Certainly, I will. Um, yes, I was brought up in Ranala in Dublin, and I worked as a medical secretary for 10 years and then got married, and we emigrated to Leeds uh, with our three-month-old baby. And we lived in Leeds for three years, and then we went to Glasgow and settled down in the north of London, in Hertfordshire, where we live now. Alongside rearing our three children... I obtained an honours BA in arts and psychology and I followed a 20-year career in counselling and psychotherapy with a special interest in dreams. So dreams are my passion and um, I suppose the inspiration for the book came from having had many vivid childhood dreams and these always fascinated me. But as the youngest of five children and parents who were sort of very busy, uh, didn't have much language for dreams, so I was always fascinated to try and understand them. So when I discovered Freud's interpretation of dreams and the Royal Road to the Unconscious, as he called it, um, I began to understand what they were about. And this led me on to do some study in psychology, and this twin, then I trained to be a psychotherapist and worked for 20 years, as I say, in GP practice and in private practice. So writing was always something I loved doing. And when it came to, I have written poetry and I've written short stories, which have been, which have been prize winners in magazines, yeah, in anthologies. So I embarked on writing a novel. Right. Now, uh, we'll move on to the various elements of the book, uh, but firstly, uh, to give context, uh, where and when is it set? What is the backdrop? Yeah, well, it's set in Dublin, and it's set in a school, a primary school, because it's about a, a dream circle that is formed, and the sessions meet every week in St. Jude's Primary School, a fictional school in Stilorgan. And a lot of the scenes are in Dublin, but there are some in Cork, uh, Skibbereen and a, a beach called Tregumna Beach where Pearl, one of the main characters, comes from. She's a traveller from Cork and the the setting, yes, it includes in Dublin, there's Sandyman Beach and there are a couple of pubs, the Searsons and O'Donoghue's and um, that, that's basically the setting. Right. Now, the subject matter is unusual. Uh, your main character, Fergus, uh, found Ireland's first dream circle. Now, and although this concept might be a familiar one in the United States, London and various European cities, it's uh, less so in Ireland, yet Fergus passionately believes that lives can be transformed through the power of dreams. This is something you share with him. Yes, I absolutely do. And it's the core of my book, really. Um, so, yes, I mean, a dream circle, if we think of circles, I mean, they're renowned as being sort of about equality and the Native American Indians had circles and they had, you know, tribal disputes were settled in circles. So in the modern day uh, dream circle, this is where the group of committed dreamers share their dreams and they learn from each other in a group um you know, where the group holds them really and supports the dreamer towards wholeness and transformation. And there's a facilitator. So Fergus is the facilitator of that dream circle and he organizes the group and sets boundaries around confidentiality and the time and the regularity of sessions and so on. Okay, now the novel is given further appeal because as well as focusing on interpreting dreams, there are other dimensions. It's a, it's a romance and also gives an insight into the personal lives of the individuals who sign up for the meetings. The depth uh, to the various characters unfolds. As a novelist, how challenging yeah. was it to bring all of the strands together? Yeah, well, it was. I mean, I had uh, some mentoring along the way. I did a course. I was 
selected for a course called the Novel Studio at City University of London. And that was a tremendous support. And we did peer critiquing. And I learned about uh, structure and plot and pacing the novel. And so that was really important in getting the story down and in completing my first draft. But yes, I did enjoy it. I mean, it, it, it was a long process. The seeds were sown back in 2010, really, when I got the idea first. But I was working and it was only when I... Uh, took some time out of work, and that was in 2015, that I I did that course, and I then carried on and redrafted and decided it was time for publication and went ahead with that on Amazon and Kindle. So it it was a great journey, though. I must admit, the characters, people say characters come alive in your head and in your heart, and that's exactly what happened for me. I mean, it takes time, obviously, to plan it all out but once the characters take root you know it then it's they really take over and they write their own stories it it sounds easy it's not but i really enjoyed all learning about the writing craft in that way right now what is the role of fergus what is the role yeah his role is facilitator i mean he is a psychotherapist who um, trained uh, in dream analysis and in Jungian analysis. And he um, is a therapist, but he forms this dream circle as the first one in Ireland because he believes passionately in dreams and the power of them to change lives. Now, he is grieving for his fiance who died in a car crash when he was driving, and that was only 18 months before he opens this dream circle. And then he meets... Uh, Pearl, who, Pearl Connors, who is a traveler from Cork, so a very different background. But she, I mean, if you think of the travelers, often their history is about dreams and fortune telling and sort of prophetic in their outlook on dreams. And so it's not unusual that she might, you know, would be interested in something like this. And the other characters also have their own different reasons for coming to the circle. And then it's how they all interact. And their stories unfold. They're not the, the central characters. Uh, Fergus and Pearl are the central characters. And then there's um, Eamon Doyle and there's Maggie Fitzgerald, who's a reliable middle-aged woman. Eamon is is a bit of a character because he is he learns a lot about himself throughout the book. But in the beginning, he's he's quite he's a little bit smug and and just a bit curious about everything, but not really as if he's interested in the topic, which is quite strange that he would join. But as the, as the book goes on, you realize why. And Tommy O'Leary, he's left the priesthood, uh, lost his faith when his mother died very young. And then he gets involved with another group member who's called Bridget, Bridget Cassidy, who's a lovable character. And although she's vulnerable because of her own background, and then there's Martin, Martin Maguire, who is, he is a very shy, sort of timid character who is controlled by his wife. So they all bring their dreams to the circle. Right. And now, now all, all those going along to the, the dream circle, except for one uh, who seems to just want to disrupt it, have their reasons. Uh, it takes particular yeah. courage for uh, Pearl to participate in uh, in it. Why is this? Well, I mean, her background as a traveller, <clears throat> if you think of the media, you know, often they get bad press, don't they? And certainly in the past. But, I mean, and, and you know, we all know that there are stories that there... But, I mean, I wanted to get away from the stereotype of the traveller, you know, getting that bad press. And she is somebody who actually wants to be be more educated. And she has had... She's a bright lady and she was... Um, educated by the nuns, the Sisters of Charity, in her childhood. And so she, you know, brings a lot to the table with her dream, her understanding of dreams. And her grandmother was a very keen dream interpreter, although she wouldn't have called it that. Right, now the Dream Circle, is at, it's had good reviews. Uh, it's absorbing as it deals with uh, relationships and uh, fascination with dreams. Uh, I know you're particularly pleased with the feedback from those working in this field. Yes, I am, because some of, uh, there's a, a doctor in psychology and uh, she, yeah, she was saying, she, even though she works with 
dreams a lot as a psychotherapist. She learned a lot. She wasn't a Jungian as such. I mean, I'm, I certainly have a lot of understanding of the Jungian side of psychology and his theories of dreams. So she said she learned a lot from that. And also she just liked the way it was interwoven with the story and with the dreams that were presented and the people's lives and how it all came together. Um, she felt it seemed very authentic. So yes, that pleased me. And there were other other people in the, in the profession. So both, it seemed to satisfy both people in the profession and people who just enjoy a good story. Right, now Fergus encourages the group uh, in the book. It's a complex area, but uh, do you think that there are, are benefits to your readers working with their own dream journals? Absolutely. That is, yeah, that is one of the reasons I wrote the book as well. Because they say write what you know and write a book you would like to read. And that was at, at the back of my mind, but not conscious, really, I don't think. It's only when I look back I can see that. So, yes, because I do believe, I mean, dreams are in danger. I know that, that might sound a bit a bit over the top, but actually there's a wonderful quote which is from a chap called Liam Hudson, and he talks about it being in danger um, there are last wilderness to be protected with the same fervour as the rainforests, the ozone layer and the whale, and the, as the only natural oasis of spiritual vitality left to us, dreams are among our most precious possessions, and we must stand up to those who would diminish the value we place on them. Now, that's quite a statement, isn't it? And I, I actually Indeed. think that's true. Yeah. Now we're coming uh, into the holiday season. This is an engaging read for a holiday. And uh, I've noted some posts where people have said uh, it made them think about uh, Ireland as a visitor destination, uh, something you must be proud of. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I know a lot of the reviewers have mentioned the poetic style. And I mean, obviously, Yeats's poem on dreams and all of that. I think you know, that attracts people to the to Ireland and the landscape and, you know, writing about the be- Sandy Man Beach and, of course, that's Joyce's territory and O'Donoghue's pub is, you know, and Searson's are in there. So it's it's quite familiar territory um, and people will have heard, of, I think outsiders will have heard of these places and hopefully the book will draw them in. If you've been inspired to find out more about the power of dreams, The Dream Circle by Maura Malone is available now. There's more information on her website, which is Maura Malone, spelled M-A-I-R-E, Malone.com. You can find a link on Amazon on their website. We're also carrying details at irishradio.org. Once again, visit Maura Malone, spelled M-A-I-R-E, Malone.com. Maura, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me. Thank you very much, Jerry. Lovely to chat.